Hello there again, everyone. This is Tim from Second State. Um, today I'm going to show you a demonstration which uh, includes the smart contract search engine that we've been working on as part of this uh, IDE environment. So the previous videos, um, we've demonstrated this amazing build tool that Second State has created. So you edit your smart contract in this window. You compile it by clicking that button. This produces the ABI and of course the bytecode. And you can deploy that to the blockchain. I'll actually go ahead and do that. So we'll create a, <clears throat> a new account here, ACC106, and I'll explain what all this means in a minute. So we'll go ahead and deploy that. And also, we've mentioned in previous videos, this is a very configurable system. We're currently running uh, a dev chain blockchain, which has one second block intervals. So this makes for some very rapid development of smart contracts and uh, the DAP front end. Now, this contract is just a really simple contract and what we're trying to do here is um, create an account and it's got a name and also has a balance so it's just a really simple contract um, which can store basically a string and a number now the point of this simple contract is to demonstrate how um, in most cases, smart contracts that are deployed on the blockchain aren't really aware of each other. So if there were five or 10 or 15 of these contracts deployed, they don't actually know that each other exists and they certainly can't go ahead and read each other's data and provide information. So the example that we're giving here today is whilst you can get and set the account balance on this particular contract, this contract is not aware of the other ones like it on the blockchain and it's certainly and none of them can can go ahead and give you the account balance of all of the contracts in existence so we're going to uh, show you how we manage uh, things like that by using this um, smart contract search engine now how these contracts are identified in the smart contract search engine is through a uh, unique deterministic hash of the ABI so we actually sort the the ABI and then we create a hash of it and once we've done that we have um, an identifier essentially and then we can go ahead in the front end in the JavaScript and we can make a call to the search engine and we can ask it for um, you know return items which adhere to this particular key so that's um, one of the, the pieces of functionality that we'll show you here today all right so we've compiled that we'll go over to the front end now so we've got the JavaScript here we'll just run this okay and we'll go down here and we'll see uh, this account number six that we've just created a couple of seconds ago uh, these other accounts were created earlier in the day of whilst building this little demonstration <clears throat> and as you can see up here we have the sum total of all of these accounts so I'll just go to the top of this um, page here this right hand side of this build tool is essentially what your end user will see when they use your DAP uh, so this is a really great way you can just hit run you can see what it looks like test the functionality if there's any issues you go back and edit either the HTML or the CSS or the JavaScript or the contract um, so again this tool is just absolutely fantastic for rapid development of decentralized applications so I'll just read this page so we're clear about what this demonstration is um, intending to do. So this page shows a list of individual accounts and their individual balances. Now each account entity, or in other words, each instantiation of the smart contract is not aware of the other accounts or their balances. So this page demonstrates how the smart contract search engine can provide the sum total of all accounts combined. Okay, so we have this account number six that we've just created together here. If I go and update this balance, say I'll put in 111, click OK. This actually, this calls a, a function of the smart contract which updates the balance. So now essentially the state of the blockchain has changed and the total is also retrieved as well. Now we know that this total is not coming from the smart contract because it doesn't have the ability to do that. So we have an auxiliary application which is going ahead and doing that work for us. The JavaScript code to do this is very straightforward. Um, what I've done here is just wrap a couple of callbacks together. So when the function is called on the smart contract, it updates the state, um, it waits uh, uh, two, uh, one second and then it displays the result and then it waits a few more seconds and then goes ahead and updates this sum total. Now how this is done, here's the smart contract search engine 
code, you can go over and have a look at that. That's at second state forward slash smart contract search engine. Uh, you can run this on just store bought consumer hardware and it's highly configurable. So let us know if you need any help. If you want to use this for specific applications, uh, we can lend a hand there. And the other thing over and above that product that we've created is this other second state product. It's at what we call ESSS and that stands for the Elastic Search um, Smart Contract Search Engine. So we are able to use this in two ways. We can either use it uh, with Node or if you wanted to just be completely traditional, you can use this just as a straightforward JavaScript class and then you can just go ahead and call that on the client side. So you don't need any any server side code, you can just run this even at like localhost or, or just using the, the file URI on your on your computer. So the, again, very configurable, very flexible. And if you have a look in this JavaScript here, we're actually seeing that I'll find the function called display total. Okay, so here's display total. What we do is we create um, ESSS instance. So as we've shown here. We just go ahead and, oops, wrong tab. We just go ahead here and instantiate this like that. And then we set the provider as part of that instantiation in the JavaScript. And then here are some usage examples. So there's a bunch of things you can do. You can hash ABIs, um, you can submit ABIs for indexing. Um, you can search using an ABI, you can search using an ABI in keywords, you can search just using keywords. So the data from the smart contract is indexed and then this system allows you to call it just with one line JavaScript commands and it's very, very flexible and very, very useful. Um, so that's about it really for this demonstration. Um, I'll just go ahead and update that balance again. So we'll change that to 222. All right, so that'll change to triple two. And then up here, this will change in, we waited that one second and the three seconds, and now that's triple nine. So that's about all we have at this point. Um, the next videos we'll be looking at uh, setting the uh, RPC endpoints to point to the Ethereum test nets and Ethereum mainnet. And so you can go ahead and create your dApps and smart contracts in here and test them with one second block intervals. And then when you're happy with that, you just change the provider and you go ahead and deploy that over to the um, Ethereum test nets or mainnet. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.